Welcome to another episode of the Miami Real Estate Show. Today, I have the true pleasure to interview one of the biggest producers in our city, Nelson Gonzalez with EWM. Last year alone, last year alone, he closed over $138 million worth of real estate. This is a true master of real estate. He's been in the industry for more than 25 years and the insights we're going to get from the interview are just amazing. You learn how to pre-qualify, truly pre-qualify clients, how Nelson pre-qualify those multi-million dollar clients that are buying and selling properties for 15, 20, 30 million dollars. How he can pre-qualify those people in less than, as he says it, in less than 30 seconds. The art of following up, making sure you're not on top of your client being pushy, but making sure you are doing the proper follow-up to make sure that when they, when it's time for them to make the decision, they go with you instead of with somebody else. Great, great insights. Also, he talks about the importance of sticking to one thing. He says, I learned from my father that to say, he said to me, he said, he said, my father said to me, stick to one thing and you will be successful. Definitely, Nelson is a great example of a very, very successful real estate agent. He talks about the importance of not only information. He says, nowadays, nowadays, every single client and every agent has access to the same information. So it's not about the information, it's about what you do with your time and with that information that truly makes you an expert and positions you as an expert. Finally, one of the great, great things that I learned from his, this interview is he says, especially after 25 years and this huge success in real estate, he said to me, Orlando, I tried to learn something from every single situation and from every single person that I meet. And he ends, up like, ends the quote like this. The biggest room in the world, it's room for improvement. So I hope you enjoy and learn as much as I did for this, from this interview. Without further ado, I leave you with this great interview with Nelson Gonzalez, top producer with EWM. Make it a very productive day, guys. Take care. This week's featured property is located in the Bath Club. Villa 6 is the only true oceanfront home on Miami Beach and the only detached home of the six villas at the Bath Club. Tri-level five bedroom, five bath professionally decorated unit with a private pool, game room, elevator, and two car garage. Unbelievable ocean views from most rooms, gourmet kitchen, huge master bed bath, and walk-in closets. Building amenities include pool, spa, gym, concierge, tennis courts, and beach service. Live the luxury lifestyle and 5800 North Bay Road in Miami Beach, the ultimate European contemporary estate with 200 feet on wide bayfront with Miami skyline views and glorious sunsets. Sited on over 52,000 square feet of exquisite gardens and swaying palm trees. Details abound with two-story rotunda foyer, open living and dining rooms open a bay and courtyard with koi pond, wine cellar, media room, master suite with massive closets, gym, summer kitchen, dock lift, pool spa, and total privacy for the most discriminating buyer. For more information about these incredible properties, contact top producer Nelson Gonzalez at 305-674-4040. Welcome to another episode of the Miami Real Estate Show. Today, I have the pleasure and the privilege to interview one of the top, top producers in Miami. Most of you know him, Nelson Gonzalez from EWM. Nelson. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming to the show. Nice having you. All right, so let's get started. I know we have a few minutes. You're a very busy person, uh, a lot of clients. Uh, they're very demanding and high end. So tell me, um, how you got, uh, what's your background, first of all? Uh, I was born and raised in, in Miami. Mm -hmm. um, grew up in South Miami and then moved to the beach when, when I started working okay. uh, in real estate. And before you did real estate, did you, did you do something else? Uh, after I graduated from college, I came down here and I um, ran the import export division for, for a for a freight forwarder. Okay. Um, and 
I went back to school while I was working for them and, and got my real estate license. Didn't do much with it, mm -hmm. and I just knew at some point I wanted to get into real estate. How long ago, ago was that? Long time ago. Long time. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, somewhere in the, in the mid-80s. All right. And uh, I know why, because you just told me, uh, but how, how you got involved in the, in the industry? Um, a girl I was going out with <laughs> okay. at the time. Many times uh, ago. Many years right, ago. Introduced me to somebody at Wimbish Realty, okay. and, and I went in uh, for an interview. And uh, literally, as soon as I walked in the door, I opened the door, and something just clicked before I even said hello to the receptionist. Yeah. Uh, I said, you know, this is it. This is what I want to do. Yeah. And for those of you who are, who don't know what uh, which company Wimbish was, I mean, that was a very successful. Yeah, with a lot were, of top producers in Miami. Yeah, they were the right. top company at the right. time. Uh, it was Wimbish for Waterfront, and, right. and yeah, they they pretty much controlled the the waterfront market in Miami Beach. And it was uh, sold to. Um, I think it was sold to Rightway, and okay. then they became Coldwell Banker, I okay, believe. Right. Is, right. So they sort of morphed into that. Right. Now you got started about twenty-seven years ago. Uh, did you have a mentor? You did the math. <laughs> I did the math, yeah. Well, yeah, that's, right. that's experience, I think. That, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Um, so, yes, I had a mentor by okay. the name of Gerard Lawrence. Okay. Uh, when I started, he, he basically did the high end, okay. and I just sort of, you know, shadowed him for, for about, you know, six months to a year, learned uh, the business, and uh, I felt extremely comfortable working in the high end. And, okay. Uh, I sold a house the first week. I was really? in real estate, so wow, um, interesting. Yeah, so I said, you know, this is this is not bad. Huh? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's still right. I mean, yeah. there's n not 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 better market than Miami to so right. to do real estate. Right. Now you had a mentor, and I'm sure you learned many things from that person. Right. Uh, one or two things that stand out from from that experience, having somebody to guide you uh, through the beginning of your business, your career. Um, basically, just how to follow up and and talk to people, and because uh, you know it's 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 proven that people that continue to follow up in a nice way, not mm -hmm. you know certainly not in a pushy way, because right. I'm not pushy at all, but you you follow up and make people continue to think about what you know about buying a home or right. or, or or thinking about you know what I do, and if you follow up two or three times it, it reminds them and, and just, you know, it gets them to, to, to move forward. Uh, it's, if it's out of sight, out of mind, and you don't follow up with them, mm -hmm. then, then they sort of tend to forget and move, mm -hmm. on, to, move on to other things. You touch in, in, a, in a very good point. Uh, actually, when we're uh, teaching other agents, the number one principle we teach is what I call the 10-90 rule, which means if we analyze our, our experience the last couple, 12 months, closings we had, we will find out that less than 10% of all those people that we work with close or did a transaction with us within the first 90 days. So less than 10% of the people that will do business with you actually will do it within the first 90 days. So that's where the follow-up comes in. Actually, if we look at our closings, we'll see that more than 90% of all the people that do business with us do it after 90 days and up to two years. And I'm sure your experience that you just mentioned with the follow-up, yes. it's critical it's to your very, success. Very critical. Right? You also mentioned going back to the, to the basics of, of real estate, which is finding clients, pre-qualifying clients, following up, presentation. You mentioned to me, because uh, I said, you know, how do you achieve that ma massive success with those uh, AI clients? And you said, I, I ask the right question. So right. can you touch on that? <clears throat> I mean, you have to identify if the buyer is actually a buyer. And, and what do you mean by that? I mean, I can talk to somebody for 30 seconds mm -hmm. and, and know exactly where they're coming from, if, right. they're, if they're for real or not for real, within the first 30 seconds right. by just certain questions that I ask them and mm -hmm. how they answer the questions. Right. And so I ask the questions, I sit back and I listen, and then they just continue right. talking and tell me you know, everything about themselves and uh, it's, it's a little bit psychology, a little bit, yeah. you know, uh, skill and, right. um, and, and, and luck always has a little <laughs> bit to do with it as well, which is great, but, okay. but you know, you have to be able to identify if, if a buyer is actually a buyer right. and, and when they're prepared right. to, to buy and, and that's how you gauge your, your follow-up. Right. Right. 
and that's critical. And we talk about you know five key five key questions. And I'm sure I mean you go through more questions than that. But under not only asking the right questions, and I would say then the success in your business is determined by the quality of the conversations you have with your client. And the quality of those conversations come from the questions you ask. Right. Uh, I say to my crew uh, that the thing that, that the challenge of me sitting here with you, it's, it's how can I not make this interview boring and it, uh, interesting to you and to the viewers. And it all comes from the questions we ask. Okay. So you, you touch on a very important point again, which is pre-qualifying those people. And uh, by asking the right questions, which many agents are afraid uh, Absolutely. That's you hit the nail right mm -hmm. on the head. A lot of people are very afraid mm -hmm. to ask certain questions, mm -hmm. uh, and and I mean I have found over the years that that you know a lot of these, especially the very high end buyers, they want you exactly. They want you to take them by the hand mm -hmm. and guide them and 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 basically tell them mm -hmm. what they should buy. Mm -hmm. I've literally talked people out of buying five to seven million dollar mm -hmm. houses because I didn't think it was right for them. Right. And I put them in, in the right situation. Right. Maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more. Uh, but I've talked people out of buying because I didn't think, you know, whether it was a family that was growing uh, and they would outgrow this house in, you know, in a matter of two years and, um, you know, th mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So by asking the right questions, you, you, you really understand where these people are, are, are coming from. Right. And, and, you know, invariably, uh, you know, nobody has ever come back to me in 27 years and said, you know, why in God's name did you put me in this situation? Right. Uh, everybody's been happy. I don't think, you know, I've ever been in a situation where everybody, where, where a buyer comes back to me, you know, years later to sell their house and, and they've lost money. Right. Uh, so. See, that's okay. from from Nelson that sold last year, and I'm going to be precise, you know, $138 million, and that's the volume, the, the sales uh, from Nelson last year. And, and it's, it's pretty much everything starts in the pre-qualifying process, right. all right? It's asking those questions, as, as you said, especially those high-end clients, they want an expert. Understand that your clients and, and all these people know many agents but they're looking not for an agent, they're looking for an expert, right? right? And as you said, take them, taking them out from a five, seven million dollar house and putting them in a different one, maybe six months later to a year later, that's what gains the trust. And, and the, the first reason why people do business with us is why? Because they trust us, right? right. right. And the way to do that is by constantly asking the right questions and communicating and, and, with them. And obviously developing a rapport with exactly. them. And again, the first 30 seconds are critical because not only am I asking them questions, but they know by the questions that I ask right. them that they know I am an expert in, in what I do. So exactly. they, they immediately develop a, a rapport right. and, a, and a trust. Right. So, um, you know, it, it, it goes both ways. Right. And unfortunately, most agents don't want to ask the questions. And the right. way I, I explain it to them, it's if you go to the doctor and the doctor doesn't ask you any question, and then gives you a pill, how would you feel, right? right? But when you go to the doctor and he sits down with you and takes 20, 30 minutes to talk to you, you feel more comfortable, right? right? So for qualifying, following up, you've built uh, one of the most successful practices, uh, real estate practices in Miami Beach. Sounds uh, like a doctor. Uh, <laughs> no, or, you know, it's, I can say firm because you work with EWM, right. but it's your practice, right? right? And actually, it's not even a team. You have a group that supports your uh, your efforts, but you are the man behind it all. What attributes, what characteristics uh, makes an expert like you in real estate such a success? Uh, again, going back to developing a, mm -hmm. a rapport, um, perhaps, I mean, I have the ability to talk to a you know Fortune 500 CEO, uh -huh. and I have the ability to talk to you know someone that you know the lawn guy right. or, or something like that, and I develop a, a rapport with anybody and everybody in right. between right. very very quickly. Um, the athletes, because I'm a sport uh, fanatic, so I've seen uh, you uh, working with a lot of uh, right. 
And you mentioned two or three different... Uh, uh, anywhere from mm. Ronnie Cycli to mm. Cher to Billy Joel right. to, you know, many others in between, but, right. but just, you know, it, it doesn't really matter who right. they are. Exactly. It's, just, it's just about, you know, trust and, mm. and, 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 you know, coming back to me as, as the expert in the field. Right. I'm not necessarily there to, to develop a relationship right. or, or a friendship with them. I mean, certainly a relationship and friendship as well if... If, yeah. if so be it, but, right. but not necessarily. I'm here to, you know, to do my job and, and you know, and, and keep it business as mm -hmm. much as possible. And then, of course, if it turns into social, great. You know, great. Right. You've worked also with many uh, CEOs, uh, very successful entrepreneurs. Yes. Anything you've learned from those people uh, in particular that stands out or the way they handle themselves in terms of business. Sure, I mean, I certainly try to learn, mm -hmm. you know, every single day from, from, from everybody that mm -hmm. I'm around, uh, from you, from, mm -hmm. from just about anybody, mm -hmm. you know, you, the biggest room in the world is room for improvement. So, <laughs> yeah, you, know, I like so that. you can always, I like you can always that. improve, you can yeah. always get better. And, and uh, so certainly I try to learn from, from anybody. And obviously those CEOs and mm -hmm. people at the very top, I mean, they can obviously afford, you know, these, these 20, 30, 40 million dollar right. houses because they're successful and, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you, you want to get in front of those people. And, and I ask them questions, mm -hmm. you know, as far as, you but know, pick how, their mind. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean, if you, you know, you, you, you very, you get very little time in front of them right. a lot of the time. So mm -hmm. you got to take full advantage of, of, of your time in front of them. Like what I'm doing right now. Right. <laughs> so you sold um, a property in Indian Creek about a, a week ago, uh, what a month ago, maybe? Yeah, a couple weeks ago. How much was the price? Thirty million. We closed for thirty million. Right, and that was from a very successful uh, hedge fund manager. Or, or uh, he was a CEO he was of, of a publicly traded company, company and right. um, and you know, listen, where, whether people are spending you know a million or thirty mm -hmm. million, they want to know that they're getting something for their money. Mm -hmm. So what I try to do more than anything else, and I is I sell value, right. even if. You know, it's the highest price, you know, house sold in the year. They want to know that they're getting value, whether it's, you know, your pen that you have mm -hmm. in your hand or, or, or whatever it is, you want to know that you're getting value. That's, mm -hmm. everybody wants that. Mm -hmm. Everybody, no matter who you are, mm -hmm. you, want, you want value for, for what you're paying for. Um, and, and, you know, that's what I sell. And, and I, you know, by, by teaching them and educating them on the market, that's how I achieve, you know, showing them the value right. of what they're paying for. Adding value to the transaction. Yes. Now, how do Nelson, how Nelson Gonzalez goes about finding, uh, learning all those market statistics? Do you have a routine? Do you have a habit, a daily practice that you implement in order to acquire that, all that knowledge? Because it doesn't just come from talking to other people. I mean, you, you, you devote yourself to become an expert in the area so you can deliver value to those very good clients of yours. Listen, everybody today mm -hmm. in this day of, of the internet, uh, everybody has the, the same uh, access to all right. of this information. I completely the comparables, agree. The, mm -hmm. you know, everything else. So mm -hmm. it wasn't like that 27 years ago. Exactly. Certainly, uh, you know, all we had was these black and white MLS books that were about <laughs> okay. this thick and they had okay. one mm -hmm. little picture of a, really? a black okay. and white I, picture I of a house and, and, and a little information at the bottom. And, okay. And that's basically all we had. Now, you still want, keep one of them or not? No, that would be a, oh, I, have I have to yeah. find one of them. I have to find one of them. Sure. Right. I, I sold it on eBay for a lot of money. Okay. <laughs> so another way Nelson makes his money. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, so everybody has access to the same information. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when that happens, you have to be one step ahead of, of the buyer. You have to know a little bit more than, than what they do. And, and, you know, how do you do that? You, you have knowledge of the market, not right. only everything that is physically on the market now, right. you know, basically everything that is sold and, and cause people will ask you question and they come with their list and they right. say, you know, what about this one? What about this one? What about this one? And you have to know everything about, right. you know, those. Um, I mean, one really good example is when, when Billy Joel, uh, mm -hmm. I didn't even know it was him that was okay. coming because I was dealing with his, with his wife at the time and, and I didn't know who she was either. Okay. And, and, you know, unfortunately I was a little late to the appointment, but I came, I came <laughs> into the office and, and he was sitting in our, uh, and he was sitting in the lobby okay. and, and my assistant Patricia calls me up and said, do you know who's in the lobby? He says, it's Billy Joel. I said, oh. <laughs> oh my God. So, That's nice. yeah, it was right. cool. So, but you know, we right. had six houses set up and after okay. the third 
one, you know, you know, because I wasn't able to ask him all the questions until he was in front of me. Okay. And in midstream, we changed gears and went, you know, completely in a different direction. So we canceled the last three appointments. We went to, you know, to the other appointments and, um, and luckily I have a great support team behind mm -hmm. me that can, right. you know, help me out and, and know how I am. And so we shifted gears and we walked into the, the fourth house and he said, you know, this is it. This is it. <laughs> and we ended up canceling all the other appointments that we had set up. So uh, you got to know when to stop as well. You know? Very important. Just because you right. have the other appointments, you can't just keep, right. you know, right. uh, showing them stuff that, right. that they don't necessarily want to see. Right. So when they say this is it, that that's a good sign that, that you know, <laughs> stop. Again, right. And you want to, uh, right. to uh, um, you know, to save everybody's time, right? right? Exactly. So so that's Billy Joel. Billy Joel. So. What common problems do you see you, you're facing today, for example, in the real estate market in Miami, or you see other agents facing at this moment, maybe inventory, maybe uh, well, prices certainly, going up? Yeah, or... certainly the lack of inventory mm -hmm. is, is getting to be uh, a bit of an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there's still a lot of demand. I mean, at the end of the day, right. everybody, the whole world wants to be in Miami, right. and it's becoming you know, such a crazy international city. Mm -hmm. and. I mean, I go on Lincoln Road and when we have to stop, you know, to cross the street, I listen, I listen, I listen to all the languages and, I do the you know, same. It's you got, amazing. You got yeah. French and Spanish and English and, you know, Russian and Portuguese mm -hmm. and uh, it's just, it's wonderful. Right. And that's, and Miami Beach is really, in my opinion, the nucleus of all of that right. and, and where it's all really coming together and it's, right. it's a beautiful thing. And you can make that comparison because you were born here. Yes. So... Miami Beach, you know, 30, the way it used to be, right? It's just right. something completely different, yeah. right? So you think the lack of inventory. So, going back to the market, how do you see the Miami market three, five years from now? Um, there's certainly a lot of inventory coming online right. as far as the condos and mm -hmm. that sort of thing, but I still see. I mean, the whole city as a whole, I think, is changing for the better. Uh, in reference to infrastructure, in reference to, uh, I think the only thing that was missing from Miami really was the cultural aspect, mm -hmm. which now we have the, the Adrian Arsh uh, Performing Arts Center, we have the Science Museum, we right. have the, uh, the Palm. Uh, right. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. the PAM. So the, we have it all now, and mm -hmm. Art Basel, you know, obviously had a lot to do with, with, with bringing all the cultural mm -hmm. aspects together in, in Miami. Right. and. Um, so I, I think I think we're we're good for many right. years to come, and, Definitely. I, and I think uh, uh, you know again the whole world wants to be here, right. and and you know everybody wants a slice of Miami. Right. I was interviewing Alicia Cervera um, about a month ago, and she said during the interview, Miami, and I'm sure you know Alicia very, very well. Mm -hmm. She said um, Miami always had the uh, the location, right? Always had the weather, but it's what you said. But it's and then she pauses and says but it's the people that make Miami different, right? Yeah. Uh, we have people from, from all over, right? yes. South America, Europe. Now New Yorkers are coming to Miami, California, people, you know, residents of California are coming to Miami. The taxes, I mean, we don't pay state taxes here. Right, that's uh, huge. In inheritance taxes, we yes. don't pay. So like somebody said a while ago, it's a great state to live, yes. and it's also a great state to die. Yes. <laughs> exactly. You don't pay taxes here, uh, and we have the culture now. Uh, and in Miami, we have the restaurants, and uh, and we definitely need uh, the type of buyer that is coming to Miami. This is coming from Jay Parker. The type of buyer that is coming from uh, to Miami uh, demands a much higher level of service. Yeah, the, right. A lot more sophisticated exactly. buyers that are coming here, and right. and you know, and you can see that with with the prices. I mean, back right. in the top top of the market in 2005, 2006, we had one sale of mm -hmm. over 20 million dollars and that was okay. the house that i sold at, at 12 indian creek that was the only house okay. over 20 million dollars that <laughs> sold and you know we thought that was the end all <laughs> of, of, of the real estate market and then obviously we had a little bit of a correction in right. 2008 well, 2009 right. but but it's it's now you know i think in 2014 we had you know the houses the number of houses mm -hmm. over 10 and 20 million dollars is astronomical mm -hmm. And I think one of the reasons also is because, you know, we didn't have the product and now mm -hmm. with, with the construction and the building of these incredibly beautiful homes, we, we now have uh, more product in that regard, okay. but also that's, that's dwindling because a lot of them have sold. And you just sold one for $30 million less than a month ago, so right. 
once you sell that, then it's much easier for the seller to ask for a higher price yes. and for, for buyers to accept the new reality of the city. Sure. Now, on the way to the top, I'm sure you had many failures, like any other successful entrepreneur, real estate agent, top producer, uh, business owner. Any failure that stands out from, uh, from, from the rest and what, first of all, how you came out of that failure and then what did you learn from that failure? Uh, I mean, obviously you try to minimize the, the, the <laughs> failures as much right. as humanly possible right. and, and if you're you know, somewhat conservative as I am, yeah. Uh, you, you, you try not to have uh, that many failures and, and you know try to have as many successes right. as possible but uh, I bought a piece of property okay. uh, myself uh, for on spec fixed it up uh, beautifully and and uh, ended up renting it and we ended up you know getting a professional uh, renter that, mm -hmm. that did, didn't like to pay rent okay. and, and it took so me, he was a professional scammer yeah, oh yeah he was right. a professional scammer okay. and, it, and it took me at the time you know probably five months and Jeez. and like thirty thousand dollars in attorney's fees to, okay. to finally get him out uh, but we finally got him out but at that point you know that that was basically my profit and that ha that happened early on and okay. and uh you know you always have to take something good from the bad and right. and of and, and because it happened early on, I was a lot more careful and, and, and certainly more conservative, right. um, you know, going forward. Right. But There's a saying that goes like, when a person with the experience meets with the person with the money, the person with the money ends up with the experience, and the person with the experience ends up with the money. Yeah. <laughs> so, that wasn't right. the case in, my, in, that, in that regard, but, but yes. Uh, well, something like that. Yeah. All right. What about successes? You know, have many successes in this business, but one that you really enjoyed and uh, also that you learned from uh, all of them mm -hmm. i you know i don't necessarily look to to sort of make the money mm -hmm. i get a thrill from putting deals together mm -hmm. and that to me is i mean i that's what i love matching mm -hmm. the right person with the right mm -hmm. property right. and the more challenging they are the, the more i like them right. uh the more you know fires i have to put out right. Uh, although it's starting to get a little old with that fire thing, but every <laughs> okay. once in a while we get an easy okay. deal, but, but it's very, very far and few okay. between. But uh, I just like working really hard to, to put a deal together, yeah. and, and at the end it's very, very satisfying, and that's, that's the part of the business that, that drives me and, right. and, and, and thrills right. me. Um, so that's, I 100% I I agree with you. Uh, I think that if you're looking for the money, the money's never going to come. Uh, money's just... Uh, reflection of the added value that you bring to the transaction. Right. Yeah, the money will and follow. The money will follow, yeah. exactly, the value. And uh, if you're doing it legally, of course, uh, which you've, done, you've been doing it for 27 years. Um, but it's that passion, and I've seen that. The people that I interview that are very successful, it's always about that passion. And we say it in, the, in our training program for real estate agencies, if I can give you only one gift, it's the gift of enjoying, you know, l l learning. And, and becoming better every single day. If you find that uh, you will never watch TV again, you will never listen to the radio. You, know, you gotta, you gotta it, just love what you exactly, do with a passion. Exactly. And, and, you know, I have three children, and, and I tell them that every day as well. You gotta, right. you know, find what you love, right. find your passion, and, right. and, and, and stick to it. Right. And stick right. with what you know. Right. And, and most people, I recommend a, a book that's called So Good They Can Ignore You. And the promise of that book is that. Most people, more than uh, this is a professor from MIT, and he says, more than 80% of the people are not born with a vocational uh, mm -hmm. profession, meaning maybe athletes, uh, performers, like Billy Joel, uh, but most people are not born with that passion, right? And uh, what you need to make sure is that you become so good at what you do, right? Nobody was born to say, you know, most people, since they were little kids, I want to be an accountant, or a lawyer, or a real estate agent. They wanted to be an athlete, a singer, right? And very few became that. That's less than 2% of the population. Yeah. But when you master something, when you become so good at it, that not only you're making money, but you get the recognition, and you know you're helping people, that's when it's nonstop. You want to continue learning, helping other people, and as you said, the money follows. Yeah. I see many real estate agents, they just want to make the quick buck, you know, working with that 10% of the, their clients. And if they don't close that deal, they don't follow up. 
uh, they don't pre-qualify. They're too busy to pre-qualify. They just want to show property or they just want to get the listing. Uh, you know, become a professional, like, like, like you said. So, what's the best advice you ever received? Hmm. I'm sure there are many, but... Uh, um, basically, you know, I wanted to get into, I mean, I was having su success in real estate mm -hmm. and, and wanted to, you know, possibly branch out in, in, in other things. And, <clears throat> and my father told me one day, just stick, stick with what you know, you're That's very, very selling. good at what you do. Just, you know, you can be, you can't be a jack of all trades and master at exactly. none. So just stick with what you know and, right. and you'll be successful. Right. And, and if you love what you do, just, right. you know, why bother? Right. you know, going into right. 10 different other things. Right. That brings me back to principle number three of our system, which is a saying that we have, that's by focusing in one area, by focusing in one area, you will create many opportunities in other areas. So what you said, many people try to do many different things, do different things. It's just focus on one thing and be good, good at it. Right. Uh, you don't want to compete. What you want is to dominate what you've done. You don't go and try to list properties in Key Biscayne, in downtown, in Fort Lauderdale. You dominate a very specific area, right. all right? And, and you become an expert, and that's what you talk, that's the people that, you know, you have a very specific market. You know how to pre-qualify those people. You know this place very well. And, and that's what gives you the edge many, many times, is that expertise, you know, as you said, those clients are looking for an expert, not for an order taker. Right. Uh, uh, it's so easy for people just to show property, but that's why clients go with other uh, agents. So do you have one habit, a routine that you do on a daily basis uh, to become more successful? Anything that you do regularly? Regularly, just, um, I mean, you know, certainly in the office we have a routine where we mm -hmm. just come in and, and if there's, you know, I go back to, you know, I get my schedule printed from, from the last two weeks and okay. follow up with, you know, just even from the day before or two days before or even two weeks before. It depends on, on you know, what, uh, what the reaction of mm -hmm. that showing was okay. uh, as to how I follow up. If okay. it's somebody that just sort of falls in love with something, obviously you're going to call them Either mm -hmm. call the agent if you're working with another agent, call them at the end of the day, right. or call them you know, the next morning and, and see what the reaction after they've had time to, to sleep on it. Mm -hmm. and, and, it and if it's something that, they're, you, know, that they're, you know that they're qualified and you know that they're gonna buy, I mean, I don't let them sleep. I mean, I just, <laughs> right. you know, just go right. after them until, exactly. until again, in right. a nice way, yeah, not, of course. not in no. a pushy way, you right. just go after them and, uh, you know, until, until you know, you put a deal together. Right. And right. especially when you start negotiating as well, um, you know, it, that's the part, like right. I said, that, that I love the most and, and, you know, and going back and forth and being the middle person and, and you know, because you have a little bit of an advantage as, as a real estate agent because you know what the seller's thinking, you know right. what the buyer's right. thinking, you right. have to sort of, you know, fit, make the puzzle fit. Right. Right. You mentioned something very important that it's, you don't want to bother other clients but you have to be consistent, you have to right. be disciplined, right? It's like, like the saying goes, you, it, nobody wants to be sold, right. right? But everybody wants to buy. So right. the idea is to create an environment where clients want to buy and you find that out by pre-qualifying them and showing them exactly what they need. Right. So finally, two more questions. You're a very busy person, right? Anything that you do to release stress? Um, probably just a little bit of exercise, okay. although I haven't been able to do that very often. And this okay. year has been, you know, quite Great. busy, but, but certainly, you know, I, I cycle, I, mm -hmm. um, you know, swim a little bit, uh, okay. go to the gym okay. a little bit. I used to practice karate for many, right. many years. Right. Um, so there's, you know, right. little things that, that you do. What yeah. level did you, did you achieve in karate? Uh, I ended up being a second degree black belt. Wow, so, <laughs> not very good, very good. Very good, <laughs> no, but it's, it's, I think it's, it's not only about the, the sport, it's about, I think it's a, the, the discipline. There was a lot of discipline the more, and a lot of, That's the know, point, yeah, right, that's the right, point. I mean, yeah. it gives you, you know, a focus. Right, right. Two more things. Uh, a piece of advice for a new real estate agent, for somebody who's getting started in the business, what would that advice be? 
Um, knowledge of the market, no more than what the buyers, again, going back to the internet and right. having access to everything. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to be very, very knowledgeable as to everything that's on the market. And, and not only stuff that's in the MLS, but you know, there's also pocket listings and things mm -hmm. like that that people you know, maybe come to you, but they don't want to list the property and mm -hmm. they, you know, they'll, they'll say, if you bring me a buyer, I'll, I'll sell the house right. and that sort of thing. So you just have to be very, very knowledgeable mm -hmm. of, of, you know, of the market and, and sound very educated at, that you know what you're doing when you're in front of a buyer. Right. Because again, you usually have very, very little time in front of the buyer and, and you have very little time to impress them. Exactly. So one last question. Because I know uh, many people in the Miami real estate show are, some of them are new agents, but many experienced agents, and many of them look up to you. Uh, they see you as a very professional person, very successful. Thank you. But, and it's the truth that, you know, you deserve it. 27 years uh, doing it successfully. So, an, adv an advice for an experienced real estate agent. Once um, they know the market. Yeah, I mean, it's different now than it was when, mm -hmm. when I first started, but I know when I first started, I didn't have really access to any buyers. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought to myself, how do I get in front of, you know, buyers or sellers, mm -hmm. actually, because right. I'm really very comfortable in, in, in getting listings. So uh, I, at the time, I used to do open houses. And in one year, I think I did 104 open houses, which was two open My houses God. every single Sunday. Wow. But I picked up buyers and sellers, <laughs> right. more importantly, right. sellers, exactly. did, you know, like crazy. And, right. and I met some incredible people that... Right people that I'm you know, still in touch with today. I'm mm -hmm. actually still in touch with the very first person I ever sold a house to. Oh. Um, and and you know, so just knowledge of the market. Uh, I did, when I moved to Miami Beach, I didn't know Miami Beach at all. You're from I, South Miami, right? I grew up in South Miami, right. and, and the only time I used to come here was maybe to go surfing, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, where, where the continuum is now. Okay, okay. Uh, long time ago, we used mm -hmm. to you know, surf uh, at, at Government Cut there. Okay. Um, so I, again, didn't know Miami Beach, so mm -hmm. I, you know, literally got in my car with a map and learned the streets, learned the streets, and just, very and I good also point. went very to the open houses mm -hmm. uh, every single Sunday. Not only I was there, but, point. but I went mm -hmm. to the open houses to, to see it physically, right. because when you physically see something, you can right. describe it much, much better right. than, than in photos right. or virtual tours and, and that sort of thing. And, and just be consistent. Right. Do you still work with buyers, only listings, only sellers? Uh, no, you work well, with you work well, with both, obviously. Perfect. But but uh, but I try to work with sellers more than more right. than buyers because then you know if you have all the listings, you control the market. Nelson, it's been a real pleasure. My pleasure. Thank, you, Thank very you very much for coming to the Miami Real Estate Thank Show. Thank you for being so persistent. Uh, no, <laughs> I, I, I tried to get Nelson for the interview many times since last year, yes. but we finally see being disciplined and persistent and, and trying to make it. We, we finally made it for you guys. So I hope you interview. I hope you enjoyed this interview as much as I did, and uh, we will see you in the next episode. Make Thank it you. a very productive day. Thank you, Nelson. All right. <laughs>